At the University of Ottawa, we've leveraged a test, a saliva test that we've used in the past for other research purposes um, to see if that saliva test was useful and if people were willing to use it uh, for a, as an extra test for COVID. So <laughs> Amelia is going to demonstrate okay. us doing a saliva test. Okay, perfect. So right. Amelia, come on in. Amelia. So these are the test kits that we used in our study. Amelia is going to provide a little bit of saliva into the test kit, just like that. Uh, she needs to provide a one milliliter in total, um, but for the sake of our demonstration, I think one bit of saliva will work just fine. Uh, and then what she's going to do is she's going to close the top of the test kit and that releases um, or that opens a membrane which releases a virucidal, a substance or fluid that kills virus, as well as a preservative so that these kits can be shipped safely back to a lab for um, ex RNA extraction and PCR analysis. How we envision this working would be that people might be able to use the saliva test that may not otherwise be able to present to a testing centre. So perhaps people that are living in rural areas or um, communities in which it's difficult to access a testing center, as well as the test um, may be able to be performed at home so people wouldn't have to travel to the testing center itself. In addition to that, it's possible that we could use this uh, type of saliva test for people that have to be tested regularly. Examples of that might be healthcare workers or teachers um, and potentially children. So in terms of the efficacy of the test, the uh, saliva samples missed some positives that the swabs picked up and the swabs missed some samples that the saliva picked up. So it seems that no, no test is perfect. Uh, the idea for adding the saliva test to the armamentarium of testing would just be to broaden the net of people being tested uh, so that we're better able to test and uh, track everyone that might be positive.